Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS. If you're new, welcome and welcome back to our regular community. Let's run the numbers. Bitcoin currently trading at 45,760, up 6.13%. Ethereum trading at 3104, up 6.34%. Let's have a look at the Ethereum tokens. If you're new to the channel and our community, welcome. I'd just like to let you know that everything I do for you is free. Seven days a week, I share my knowledge as a full-time technical trader with 20 plus years of experience to assist you to be more of a financial blessing to yourself and those you love. The market is looking good today, isn't it? Uni up 11.02%, Chili's up 25%, Engine up 15.24%. Wow, nice. The videos, videos I do for you are very community driven and I've hidden knowledge gems throughout this video. Unless you watch to the end, you'll miss them. See how many you can find. Doge is up 7%, BNB 5.61%, look at DOT up 7.94%, go DOT. I'd like to share rule 71 with you, analyze why. The Dalai Lama has a very nice quote, a disciplined mind leads to happiness. When we're talking about trading and investing, I just put a little quote together for you. Analyzing why you buy or sell is a key foundation of consistent profitability. Many times you will buy or sell. And it's important to note, even if you're an investor holding for the long term, perhaps 10 years, five years, three years, one year, whatever, how long you want to hold for, it's really important to understand that whenever you buy or sell, you become a trader. It's normal for investors to invest when price is going up, like what we're seeing right now. This has happened before. It happened back in the early parts of February, late parts of January. Price was going up and up and up. People were being advertised to come into the market. Extreme greed was exhibiting itself inside the market. We had a sell off. Everybody bought the dip, came up again, sell off, bought the dip. And then we got to a peak. Then we made a lower high here, showing that the price and the momentum was weakening. And then a sell-off ensured. What happens when you are a trader? You look at all of these issues with the concept of always lowering your average buy price, but also avoiding risk wherever you can. When you invest and you also trade, you have a trader's mindset. Even if you're investing, you will find that you can buy really, really well. For example, traders are very different. When a trader sees extreme fear in the market, they buy. They actually catch a falling knife. You can see from around the peak, not exactly, I've just done approximately, from around that peak, the market fell over 50%. If you had have bought around that bottom when the extreme fear was in the market, when the price recovers of Bitcoin to back to that particular point, you will see a near 100% increase. This is what the joys of mathematics when used correctly are all about. Price can come down from 10 to five, but when it goes up from five to 10, it decreases 50%, but goes back up 100%. You always want to lower your average buy. It's a really, really important gem. That's why analyzing why you buy or sell is really, really important. Are you buying because price is being bid up? It's just so attractive. Price can never go down. This is the lowest it will ever be. <laughs> be careful of those things. You've just seen that that's really not true. Price is always moving in a wave. It's going up and down. In the markets, you will develop your own unique style and unique way of doing everything. I like to think that you're a complete artist. You do whatever suits you. When you analyze why you do things, you will have a greater appreciation and understanding of what works for you. And you will be able to identify what has worked against you and seek to minimize those problems. 
just popping down your reasons and whys in a journal or in your calendar wherever you find it most useful to you is a great way to go i just thought i would share the headlines from the wall street journal for you bitcoin is surging on infrastructure everybody who knows and has been around crypto for a little while knows that bitcoin is not surging on infrastructure wow coinbase head of capital markets leaves after four months that's brett redfern very interesting a former regulator who joined coinbase global earlier this year it's very very interesting we've had a couple of these sort of seismic shifts recently brian brooks quit ceo of crypto exchange binance us us government bond yields rose after the jobs report what was the jobs report the us economy added 943,000 jobs in july unemployment rate five fell by 5.4 percent quite interesting little articles here Manchin says the Fed should reserve, reverse easy money, uh, money policies. Chip shortage. This is really interesting because if you think about crypto, it's really run on chips. What's really interesting is Taiwan is a major creator of chips. Treasury's big rally gets help from skeptics of low rates. Yields are down. This gives you a bit of an understanding of what we're going to be looking at. It makes it so practical. Oil prices slide on worries that the Delta variant will hurt demand. China producer prices, inflation jumped despite efforts to cool commodity costs. Crypto exchange, Polynex, to pay 10 million to settle SEC probe. There's a couple of different things here and the Senate Democrats outline a $3.5 trillion anti-poverty and climate plan. This is very useful to keep in the back of your mind all of these kind of stories as we go through this particular trend episode. We have a really beautiful community. Our community is dedicated to the pursuit of real wealth, which is more than money. It's all the beautiful things that go along with it. Many in the community over the months have reached out to me and said, Ken, I'd just like to show my gratitude and appreciation. A couple of days ago, I started a little site on buymeacoffee.com slash crypto trading KS. I've been totally overwhelmed by the people who have just reached out and bought me a coffee. I got to say, I love coffee and it comes in really handy on late nights, but it, it's just so beautiful. I want to thank everyone that's done that. It's very, very kind of you. Nobody has to do that. I, I don't require it at all. I would just like to say thank you for the people that did. Rule 174, the T cube method, trend, timing and trigger. We're going to look at trend now. We'll use the KS process to determine the true trend across all the markets. The first thing we do is look at investment substitutability. We can see stocks up 32%, precious metals, gold down 13%. That's better than yesterday, it was down 15%. Good on your gold, keep going. Bitcoin up 298%. Let's have a look at the Bitcoin trend. What we're really doing is putting together an early warning system on potential changes in price. We turn to the KS model, which is a crypto technical trading model based on institutional price psychology. We're looking for this cycle at a minimum high of $132,418. This minimum high will keep in protected the mathematically protected all-time high from the previous cycle this has always been the way with bitcoin it has a number of properties that have been very solidly maintained throughout time we're seeking a high between 288 and 486 thousand dollars when the bear market low hits around the end of april 2023 I'm estimating a low between $43,320 and $72,900. That very much depends on what high is reached in this process. If you're new to the community and the KS model, it's really important to compare the same psychologies. 
we compare the sunshine, the expectation of upwardly progressing prices of the bull market to the same psychology in par cycles, to the same psychology in par cycles. When you cross a psychological boundary and you compare a psychology of prices going up to a psychology in the bear market of prices decaying by around 85%, it doesn't take a mathematician to know that that's going to create some very weird observations and conclusions. That's why we don't do it. Crypto peaks are driven by excess euphoria. This blue line, the bottoms are hammered in by capitulation, which is extreme fear. Looking at past cycles, we get these blue lines for euphoria, these red for capitulation. Looking at the current price action, we're a long way from blue and a long way from red. Going hand in hand with euphoria and capitulation is the concept of the MVRV Z score or Z score. This really measures how overvalued this red area or undervalued this green area Bitcoin is relative to its phase in the market. When there's a lot of euphoria in the market, Bitcoin becomes really overvalued. We can see by current price action, we're a long way from being overvalued. Looking at realized cap hodl waves, we generally have these three spikes. We have had them for each halving cycle. We're through the first, we're expecting two more. You can see how those realized cap hodl waves are very related to relative unrealized profit. You see these three, see these three, we're at one, we expect two more. When we get close to euphoria, we see a mass of transfers of the number of Bitcoin to exchanges. We're looking at the past cycle. We're not seeing that kind of behavior right now. As euphoria drives the price of Bitcoin up across its fair value into this red zone, the Puel multiple actually measures the daily revenue as opposed to the daily average revenue over the past 365 days. We can see we're quite a way away from this red area right now. When we get into euphoria, which creates the blow off top, that's what we're looking for in price. When that happens, we'll know that we're close to a either intermediate top or a final top. It's always really good to zoom out. There's four basic phases to the Bitcoin cycle. Phase one is a long phase of price appreciation. We're now in phase one. Phase two is the bear market phase. And you can see this really puts it all in perspective. Bitcoin is continuously going up. Phase three is the consolidation phase. I call phase three and phase four consolidation because I think that's an easy way to look at it. It's really important to be aware that this is a log scale graph. The difference between a log scale and normal arithmetic graph is that you can see they're quite different. What we're doing is tracking relative constant percentage changes. Here on normal arithmetic, we're constant doing constant increments. Very, very different ways of looking at data. When we zoom in to the KS model at the current price, we can see it's overcome its logarithmic resistance, structural resistance line here. We've got an upward channel of support. There's a couple of things inside the market that we have to be very aware of, but this is looking very good. It's really important to understand what crypto actually is. It's not a currency. You may have heard cryptocurrencies are a currency, and that would be fair. It's in the word cryptocurrency, but it's actually not a currency at all. It's a next evolution of the internet. It's a way that digital payments can occur. It's really a seismic upgrade to the internet to create the internet of value. That internet of value is growing really, really quickly across the past six months from crypto.com their research paper showed that an average of 19.2 million new users came into crypto for each month over the last six months wow 
The trend video is all about early warning systems. We have to look at health, especially the Delta variant, to understand if that could pose any risks to the stock market as well as crypto. Because in the stock market there's many crypto stocks. The first thing we do is look at the number of cases, particularly the weekly case percentage change. We want this number to be negative. It's currently plus 6%. Over the last four days, there were 4,429,905 new cases. We're looking for negative changes week on week. These greens are very, very good. That's what we want to see. This data is from worldometers.info. We can see that the dashboard from John Hopkins University has been changed. It's no longer showing the three waves is just showing this particular data. We can just keep our eyes on the vaccine doses. Let's have a look at how the stock markets are performing across the world. From Fidelity Institutional, we can look at the business cycle update. We can see most of the economies are either early stage or recovery or China and the US approaching mid stage. When we look at the US market, the VIX, which is the market's fear gauge, is currently just having a little uptick, but it's below these resistance levels. If we look back at past crises when the world shut down and the US liquidity crisis occurred, the VIX spiked up and then went crazy, increasing 538%. We're not seeing that kind of behavior yet. Looking at the NASDAQ 100, we can see the markets exhibiting a little bit of weakness. I'll zoom in there at the moment. This excessive weakness accompanied the sell-off that occurred across markets. This is a weakening of price action, but we still have a high, a higher high, and a higher high. That's not a lower high. But let's see what happens in terms of this air here. Does it get covered? We've seen a really good run up for the NASDAQ 100 and indeed all the indexes. We wouldn't be at all surprised if it came down to touch support and resumed off again. The S&P 500 still continues its march upwards. It's doing quite well. The Russell 2000 showed a bit of weakness, but it's increasing in strength currently. The Dow Jones made a high and a higher high and a higher high and a higher high. This is all constructive price action currently. It's really good to understand that market sell-offs and market crashes don't happen as instantly and as unpredictably as what a lot of people think. In fact, if we look at treasury bonds, we see that before the last crisis, T-bonds were going up, really performing incredibly strongly. What do we see now? They were going up, they hit a level of resistance, turned that into support, but they're currently weakening. That is a really good sign. If the economy was in problems, the T-bonds would just start soaring up. We're not seeing this currently. In fact, when we look at the TLT, the 20 plus year treasury bond ETF, we can see the TLT has dramatically decreased in price. When things are really rallying, they go up like this. They don't behave like this. This is a good sign, but we've got so many things we need to look at inside the economy to triangulate the current position. The 10 year treasury note yield, when there are problems, it dramatically weakens, it collapses. We're not seeing that, it's strengthening right now. This is a really good sign. The 30 year treasury bond yield does exactly the same thing as the 10 year we can see it's now increasing in strength. High yield corporate bond ETF, we saw in the last crisis, what happened is the HYG literally sold off, tried to reach back to support and couldn't make it and just collapsed. We're seeing a little bit of weakness here. We need to keep our eye on this. Copper can give us an advance warning on decaying markets. Copper actually sold off way before the market indexes got hit. 
we can see a little bit of a sell-off, but we're at this support. If we see continued weakness below that support, that will signify that we need to reassess situations and potentially risk off. When the world shut down because of the virus, we saw the airline sector getting tremendously hit. You can see this particular negative price action. It was just dropping like a brick. Right now, we've had weakness in the airline index, but there is a level of support here that it's coming back to. We need to keep our eye on this one too. There's been a lot of discussion about the transportation index. It's really important to note that when the transportation index goes down, it literally will drop. When we get these big drops, we know that there's a problem afoot. Looking back to the last cycle before the market problems, we saw the transportation ETF weaken, not be able to get back above that now resistance. What are we seeing here? We're seeing that the transportation ETF is basically at support. We need to keep our eye on this. Transportation and the indices, the major indexes, should move up together. It makes a lot of sense. When things are going well, we would expect more trucks on the road. We would expect more transportation to occur. There's quite a few different transportation indexes. Let's look at the Dow Jones transportation average. We can see back when the crisis was unfolding, there was a failure to get above this resistance. What do we see now? We're under resistance. We need to keep an eye on things. We don't deal with problems until they occur. We don't prepare for crashes until they occur, or they've got a good probability of occurring. So for now, we just look at this and note it. As this is an early warning system, its whole focus is detecting any market weakness across as many different categories as we can. We look at utilities. Before the sell-off, utilities were rallying really, really hard upwards, a lot of price pressure upwards. We can see there is some price pressure upwards. It's got over this resistance and turned it to support. Let's keep our eye on this. We're looking for a confluence of indicators. We can see that some are starting to confirm each other. Whenever gold rallies, there's generally instability, conflict, a flight to safe haven assets. We can see the price recently in gold has decayed quite substantially. Looking back to the previous cycle, just before the problems emerged throughout the world, gold was doing really, really well. We can see there is a divergence here. A few members of the community reached out to me by direct message and said, Ken, could the sell-off in gold be like what's happened here? What happened in there was basically all of the markets were just plummeting. They were plummeting down 50, 60 percent, 30 percent, depending on what markets we were looking at. The issue here is the bond ETF is actually exhibiting really positive signs. We need a confluence of indicators. We just look at this and say, OK, what this signifies to me through my eyes from a lot of trading is simply that gold is not a safe haven asset that is being taken up because people feel that there is a problem. Another way to quickly think about it, if the TLT was also rallying up like this, then we would be concerned, but it's actually decaying. That means the flight to safety is abating. That means it's pretty much risk on, not risk off. It's also good to note that silver and gold tend to follow each other. We're seeing silver moving in the same basic direction of, as gold but the same kind of concept here. We'll just bear in mind what is happening. We've got to make sure that this is not signifying something like this. There are no indicators pointing to this, but we'll just keep our eyes on it. One potential explanation could be that gold and silver are being recycled into the crypto market, which could explain the incredible increase in prices recently. If we look at back to the past cycle when 
the market was selling off. Bitcoin and crypto sold off far earlier than the main markets did. It's just interesting to keep these things in mind. In episode 130, I pointed out that I felt that the markets would retrace and the money would flow across to the crypto industry. That's episode 130. It's nearly about three and a half weeks ago. If we look at Brent oil, we can see before the major sell-off, we had a sell-off in oil. Oil became weak before the main market sold off. Oil is becoming a little weak at the moment. There is a degree of support inside the markets, but we really need to keep our eye on oil. Light crude oil absolutely decayed when the crisis hit. It actually went negative, as you can see on this axis. Horrible time for a lot of people. We can see this particular trend line broke and the resistance was very, very strong. We've seen a bit of a wobbling around here with light crude oil, but we're not seeing any significant sell-offs. I think if light crude gets a little bit lower than what it is, we'll, we will need to start re-evaluating things. This red area here on the DXY, the US dollar currency index, was when the main markets were selling off, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, when they were selling off. Before that happened, there was a flight into the safety of the dollar. It's almost like you could compare it to a stable coin in crypto. For example, when we see USDC, DAI, USDT, BUSD, they are the stable coins. When they go green, the market is typically red. It's very much like the DXY in the normal stock market. We can see the DXY cover this resistance and these two levels of resistance have been cut through as well. The dollar is strengthening. We can see a bit of risk in the stock market, but it's really important to deal with problems when they occur, not before. Let's have a look at the global markets. They can always give us a bit of an understanding as well. Canada's market is actually improving in price. You can see it's going up. When the crisis hit and the stock market sold off, there was extreme weakness under support. We can see prices increasing currently. Let's have a look at China's Shanghai Composite Index. It's really interesting to note that Shanghai's China, uh, <laughs> China's Shanghai Composite Index actually sold off about a month before the main markets in Canada, the S&P, the NASDAQ, Literally, Italy and France and Spain and Switzerland sold off. This could be a bit of a forward indicator. We've seen some real major structural weakness occurring here. The China market is trying to repair itself. We all hope it does. Looking at India's Sensex market, we saw in the last episode, the last problematic sell-off in the market, the Sensec actually was a leading indicator of the sell-offs in other markets. What we can see here is the India market is really rallying. It's over that resistance and going for gold. Like India's market, South Korea's Kospi 200 is a leading indicator of weakness globally. We can see that the Kospi is actually above that resistance. It's seeking to consolidate. That's really good. We don't see any of this sort of behavior that we saw in the last sell-off. Japan's Nikkei 225 index was weakening recently. We're seeing it starting to strengthen. Go Japan. When we go back to the previous sell-off, we can see that the Nikkei decayed rather rapidly. We're not seeing that kind of behavior at the moment. The IPC Mexico index is continuing to consolidate after breaking out. That's a really good positive sign. Brazil's market index is continuing to show a little bit of weakness. We need to keep our eye on this one. The UK's FTSE 100 index is continuing to strengthen. 
Look at Germany's DAX 30. We can see that it's actually recovered over the previous COVID levels. That's really good. It's seeking to make a higher, all time high really. It's on the road. Italy's market has just overcome that resistance from the previous all time high pre COVID. Very good Italy. France's CAC 40 index continues to make all time new highs. It's recovered from that previous sell off. Australia's market has also recovered from the previous high pre COVID. It's starting to rally up too. Spain's IBEX 35 is still under the previous peak, but is recovering. The Swiss market is showing extreme strength. It's recovered from the previous all time high and it's just marching up really, really well, seeking to make another all time high on very strong price movement. Singapore's market is currently improving, making a play for the pre COVID level. Now that we've assessed overall market health globally and looking at potential weaknesses inside the economy, we can see there's a bit of a risk off appetite playing out, but there is still some uncertainty. So we just regard it as business as usual. Let's look into the stocks, the major stocks, and then the crypto stocks. Looking at the FANG stocks, Apple is just underneath resistance. Microsoft has been on a tear recently. It's just crossed above resistance, turned it to support and is consolidating for a move up. Google is seeking to break out from that resistance. Amazon has been showing a lot of weakness recently. It's below resistance. Facebook is seeking to challenge the immediate resistance above it. Nvidia crossed a across this resistance, turned it into support and is rallying up. PayPal recently rallied up to try and take out this previous all time high. It was crushed down by selling. It's seeking to recover ground now. Netflix is continuing to strengthen. No crypto related stock can escape Bitcoin's gravity. We can see the grayscale Bitcoin trust moving up in line with Bitcoin. We can see the same Bitcoin gravity playing out on coin shares, physical Bitcoin as Bitcoin moves up. That's the Goldie line, <laughs> Goldie line behind coin shares, physical Bitcoin. As we see it moving up, coin shares, physical Bitcoin, BitC is moving up with it. The purpose Bitcoin ETF is also obeying Bitcoin's gravity moving up. This is a real gem to understand. If you're trying to figure out where something will go, for example, the three IQ coin shares, Bitcoin ETF, just track the price of Bitcoin. You can see what it's going to do. BTCE is moving up in line with the increase in Bitcoin's price. QBTC, the Bitcoin fund Canada is also moving in line with Bitcoin's price. It's moving up. The Bitwise 10 crypto index fund, BitW, we can see it moving with Bitcoin's price, but it's showing relative weakness. This is really interesting. It would be interesting if any community members have any insights into why BitW is not performing like the rest of the market. You might like to leave a comment if you're interested in looking into BitW. The Grayscale Digital Large Cap Fund is moving in line with Bitcoin's price. It's moving up. 21XB, 21 shares Bitcoin, is moving in line with Bitcoin's price. It's going up. Vanek, Vector's Bitcoin ETN, is moving up in line with Bitcoin. CI Galaxy Bitcoin ETF is moving in line with Bitcoin's price. Osprey Bitcoin Trust, OBTC, holds 2,820 Bitcoin. It's moving in line with Bitcoin's price, but not as strongly. It's a little bit suppressed. The nine point Bitcoin ETF, BitC, is moving in line with Bitcoin's price quite well. It's really tracking the price very, very well. The Bitcoin ETF, EBIT, E-B-I-T, 
is tracking Bitcoin's price really, really well. Let's now look at public companies with Bitcoin holdings. MicroStrategy Inc. currently holds around 105,085 Bitcoin. You can see it moving very much in line with Bitcoin's price. Tesla has recently broken out of a consolidation range. It's making its way up. Galaxy Digital Holdings holds 16,400 Bitcoin. It's performing very, very nicely, tracking Bitcoin's price quite well. Voyager Digital holds 12,260 Bitcoin. It's currently tracking Bitcoin's price really well. It actually throws out some interesting forewarning signals as well. Voyager Digital could be one to pay attention to. Square holds 8,027 Bitcoin. It's currently seeking to break out from resistance and turn this to support and take out that previous high. Marathon Digital Holdings is improving in price. Coinbase Global is breaking out from this resistance under strong support. A real gem for you, and I know you've been listening to this and you've probably seen it anyway. The concept, when Bitcoin's price comes down, stocks reliant on Bitcoin also do the same. When it comes up, that also happens. You can see disproportionate waves occurring from time to time, but it's really good to keep your eye on the association between Bitcoin and whatever beloved crypto stock that you have. It will make you very, very profitable to understand that particular gem. ADE, the Bitcoin Group SE, is following tracking Bitcoin's price, but it's under some price pressure. It's improving, but not quite in the way and shape and form of other stocks. Another gem for you is when I say tracking Bitcoin's price, you can see it quite easily when price is going up and up and up. The concept is the directional movement of Bitcoin is tracked by alts and stocks. Really, really interesting. Typically, when Bitcoin goes down, an alt or a stock will go down with it. When it has a little bit of a reprieve, you can see some positive price action. Continuing down, you can see downward price momentum. And you can see here that it doesn't always follow. It just follows on average. It's a good thing to understand. Sometimes Bitcoin can become disconnected with various alts and stocks. But what I've seen, it eventually snaps back. And that's why I say no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity, just as no stock can escape Bitcoin's gravity. If it is a pure blockchain stock, if it's kind of a hybrid doing something and also blockchain or also Bitcoin, that can be a little bit different. Bitfarms Limited, BitF, is doing really well. Look at that power surge in price. Argo blockchain, ARB, is realistically consolidating. It's showing a little bit of weakness here. It's very cool that Hive blockchain technologies was in the news that we looked at in the timing session yesterday. It's so very interesting how these crypto stocks are emerging inside the news of Bitcoin. Of course, why wouldn't they? But it's really interesting. The Bitcoin community doesn't really look that much at stocks in the main. Some, of course, some people do, of course, but it's really fascinating. What we see here, Hive Blockchain has been doing quite well, and it's realistically following the directional bias of Bitcoin. I thought you might like to see this. BitDigital BTBT has rallied up nearly 400% over the past 17 days. Go bit digital. Silvergate Capital Corporation, SI, is just breaking out from resistance. It's broken out. It'll probably come back for the retest at some stage. I needed to give you all that background because of what's happening with the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. Cynthia Lummers, Senator, she said, maybe I just go down here, that there have been problems in actually passing 
of getting the recommendations to exclude certain people from the definition of a broker under the Internal Revenue Code. That's really what page 2434 in the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act is seeking to change. It's seeking to change section 6045C1 of the Internal Revenue Code of 1986. The problem here is that any person who for consideration, which means they are paid, this is an element of contract. Contracts have seven elements, form, capacity, consent, offer, acceptance, legality. This consideration is a very, very important part of creating a contract. So any person who creates a contract and gets money is responsible for regularly providing any service that facilitates transfers of digital assets on behalf of another person, on behalf of another person. This is really, really problematic in terms of how the lawmakers are looking at it. I always do a tremendous amount of research. Senator Pat Toomey from Pennsylvania basically said this. This is from C-SPAN video. This is literally the uh, speech from the Senate, the US Senate. I'll just read this to you because it's quite important. He's saying that validators, miners, stakers, hardware and software wallets, software developers across any kind of platform, they're going to be pulled into that ridiculous definition. This one here in part D, that will change this internal revenue code uh, a paragraph. It will basically introduce another sub paragraph. That is a problem. Many people thought it would be fixed because common sense says that they don't even have the capability to provide the details to the IRS that would be required to actually fulfill the criteria of this section. Understandably, Senator Pat Toomey is pretty disappointed. Maybe I'll just read a little bit of this to you. According to the underlying bill, this is what is going to pass. This is what's going to get sent probably ultimately to the president's desk. It's a reporting requirement, a transaction reporting in requirement, including, and this is the key part, name, taxpayer ID, number, dollar amount, and date. It is imposed on any person for consideration, that's money, is responsible for regularly providing any service effectuating transfers of digital assets on behalf of another person. He says he's not even a lawyer, but that's going to include validators, potentially miners, stakers, hardware, software, wallets, software developers. This is absolutely insane. Everybody thought that some degree of intelligence would prevail, but it obviously hasn't done so. Senator Pat Toomey says this isn't over. The original intent of the broker definition was to capture centralized exchanges that do KYC, which is know your customer. That's really about AML law, anti-money laundering law, which is fair. It's part of the financial system. Everybody understands that. But increasing the definition of a broker to a miner, a staker, someone that does a hardware wallet or software devs is just purely insane. And he says it, we're going to do a lot of damage. Who knows how much innovation we're going to stifle. And when he says we, it's not him, it's, it's the government. He's basically saying you're about to cause enormous problems to crypto. And he sees it, and of course we see it as well. He says, who knows what kind of new apps just never emerge. It's hard to predict what kind of completely impossible mandate results in. Not good. I think from my perspective in reading this and looking across the markets, there's a certain amount of risk. Now, I'm a trader, so I don't know your needs. All that I can do is say, this is what I'm doing, but you need to know I'm trading. I'm in and out of the market. 
I'm reducing my exposure and I'm doing a risk off event. Now, it's also really important to understand that things can take weeks or months to play out. It doesn't mean anything is going to crash tomorrow. It could simply be a thing that if you have some profits that you would like to take off the table, you can take a percentage of those profits off. The market is likely to keep on going up at the moment because it has a degree of momentum behind it. That's also important to understand. I don't care about timing tops or bottoms. I don't want every last particular dollar out of a trade. I don't require it. It's just all about doing good trade management. That's the critical thing that I apply as a trader. When you come across something like this, it's not really a reason to panic, but it is a reason to be aware. And the probably most important thing, and that's why I had to discuss this last, I couldn't put it up first, because you wouldn't have the context of, as to what the markets are doing. If we look at bonds, they're not increasing like there's a crisis. Gold generally increases when there are problems. We're not seeing that as well. The dollar is going up a bit. Transportation is weak. Copper is a little weak. We can see looking across the markets that the global markets are relatively okay. They're not showing weakness as opposed to China's market. And that's basically some self-inflicted stuff that the, the government did to itself. So, okay, that's, that's to be expected. But for everything else, I think, I think things are looking okay. I would just suggest that you be mindful rather than please don't panic about any of these things. Just keep an eye. If you would like to take a little bit of profit, that's always a good thing because price moves in waves. Inside our community, it's all about going to the source. So I go to the source of the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. I go to the source of the Internal Revenue Code. I want to hear from the actual senators that are involved on the floor talking about things. I want to read the transcript of exactly what they say. This is exactly what Senator Pat Toomey said on the floor. When you go to a lot of other channels, you're going to get a lot of FUD. People making things up, people not doing the research, people trying to clickbait you into the title. It's really important that you go to the source as much as you can. I would suggest if you're on Twitter, please add at S-E-N-L-U-M-M-I-S, -M -M Senator Lummis. I think that she is just doing a fantastic job, very good. And also you can add Ron Wyden at R-O-N-W-Y-D-E-N and Senator Toomey as well at S-E-N-T-O-O-M-E-Y to your Twitter feed. Please follow these people. They're really, really good. In your research, please go to the source as much as you can. I will always be going to the source to deliver the absolute highest quality information to you. If you find sources, please let me know. I'm always here for the community. That's why I exist. I really want to help our community to prosper and to be aware of what's going on. I hope you found the content useful. Everything I do for you is free. Please be aware of scammers. Thank you very much to our moderators for keeping our community safe. And for all the community members who talk to each other, say hi classmates. It's so beautiful. I just love reading all your comments. I do so every day. I do these videos to assist you to be more of a financial blessing to yourself and those you love. Please say hi and let me know where you're viewing from. And of course, if you have any questions, I'm very happy to include those in upcoming episodes. If you would like daily updates seven days a week on price movements in the crypto market, please subscribe to YouTube and follow me on Twitter. Crypto is volatile. Always prepare yourself for the best and the worst case scenarios. Reality will likely be between them. Stay safe out there. Take care. 
and see you next time. Bye for now.